Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer before the message. Heavenly Father, we thank you for how you have continued with us all through from the beginning until this time. We're asking, O oh Lord, that the light of your word will explain everything to us so that, Lord, we will not be in the dark in Jesus' name. We pray that the truth will so register on every heart that our lives will be acceptable in your sight in Jesus' name. As you have saved us, keep us steadfast and to remain secured in your kingdom. Help us not to be careless about our Christian life, not to be careless about reaching the final goal you have for every one of us. Keep us by your grace. Keep us in your grace. And keep us in more abundant grace. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at John chapter 15. As we consider the message, conditions of security in Christ. Conditions of the believer's security in Christ. John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he the father taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which has spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Amen. Amen. The Lord knew that his disciples were familiar with the famine situation, with the vine, with the vineyard, with the husband man, and with the keeper of the vine. And so he made use of that illustration in talking about every branch in him, every believer in him, every follower of Christ. And he says to begin to believe is a good step. It's a great step. It's not the final step. Beginning is good. Continuing to walk with him, abiding with him, remaining steadfast in him, secured in him, is the most important. And so he says, I am the true vine. And my father, watching over the vineyard, 
He is the husband man. And he talks about two categories of believers. Those who abide and those who do not abide. Those who continue and those who do not continue. Those who stand steadfast and those who are shaky who wander away. And so he says in verse 2, Every branch in me, born again, believing, already in Christ, a new creature in Christ, every branch in me that bears not fruit, that forgets that every branch in the vine is purposefully there to bear fruit. And he does not make any effort, does not have the grace, does not possess the ability to produce fruit. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he, the Father, taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, a believer, saved, forgiven, set free, abiding, having the grace of God, thereby bearing fruit, he purges that it may bring forth more fruit. And to apply it to his disciples, he says, now, ye are clean, through the word which has spoken unto you. They were already born again. Their names were written in the book of life. And he encouraged them. And he said, now that you are clean, now that you are born again, now that you are a follower, now that you are a disciple, now that your names are written in heaven, verse 4, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abides in me, he believes in me, he keeps on believing, he stands, he abides, he remains, he's faithful, he's walking steadfastly, he continues with me. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Verse 6. If a man abides not in me, if a man feels I am saved, and it doesn't matter whether I abide or not, if a man says I am saved, and it doesn't matter whether I'm steadfast or not. If a man says, I'm a branch, I'm a believer, I'm a child of God. If he does not abide, if a man abide not in me, he's cast forth as a branch and is withered. And man, men gathered them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. That already tells us that the Christian has conditional security. A believer who abides is secured. A believer who does not abide is not secured. We're coming to this passage under three subtitles I'm reading from verse I'm now number one the condition 
of the believer's security. The believer who has come to the Lord, if he's going to be secured, there's a condition. The condition of the believer's security. Point number two. Number two, the consequence of backsliders' sinfulness. A person who has been in the Lord and then he backslides and he goes into sin, he goes into evil, that believer who becomes a backslider that backsliding has consequence. I pray you will not backslide. Give me good day. Amen. Yeah. The believer must continue. Continue in the Lord. Continue in the word that God has given us. Continue in everything. That the Lord has for us. And as you continue, the Lord will keep you in Jesus' name. I will continue. I said I will continue. Point number two, the consequence of backsliders sinfulness. Point number three, our consecration with blameless steadfastness. Consecration, commitment, following the Lord for steadfastness, blameless self steadfastness. Number one, tell me number one again. The condition of the believer's security. We're coming to John chapter 10, and I'm reading from verse 27. John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And then he goes on to say in verse 28, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Those are the verses some people look at. And they forget other verses in the chapter. And they forget other chapters in the gospel according to John. And they say, look at what Christ has said. Yes, I can see. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And as long as we continue hearing the voice of the Lord, hearing that voice, following that voice, obeying that voice, He knows us. And they follow me as long as we continue following Him. At step after step. And we continue in the Lord. They follow me. I give unto them eternal life. Not the ones that are not following, not the ones that are not hearing, not the ones that are not believing. They believe, they continue to believe, they follow, they continue to follow. And because they follow like that, he says, I know them. And he says, I give them eternal life. And it says, they shall never perish. As you follow the Lord, you will not perish. 
neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater, greater than all. And no man is able, and no sinner is able, and no Satan is able, and no demon is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. But look at the condition. Let's come to verse 5. It says in John chapter 10 verse 5, And a stranger will they not follow. Those are the people that are secured. A stranger will they not follow. A false preacher will they not follow. A false shepherd will they not follow. A false doctrine will they not follow. No, but will flee from him. Those are the people that are secured. Here is the condition that you believe in the Lord, you're secured in the Lord, you're stable in the Lord, and you're not following a stranger, and you're not following strange doctrine. And then it goes on to say, For they know not the voice of strangers. You will not follow them. First John chapter 2. The condition he outlines and the condition he reveals that makes the believer secured. First John chapter 2, reading from verse 24. In first John chapter 2, verse 24. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. The word you heard, that you believed, you repented, you came to the Lord, you received salvation, and you got new life, you got a new character of the new creature, let that abide in you. If that which ye have heard from the beginning, shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. There is an if. There is a condition. On condition you allow what you have heard from the beginning be in you, abide in you, and you live by that in the grace of God. You will continue in the Lord. First John chapter 2 verse 28. In verse 28, now little children abide in him. Not abiding is dangerous. Not abiding means you'll be lost. To be secured, to remain in the Lord until the final reckoning day, abide in him. That when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. I will not be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. Abide in him so that you will not be ashamed. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, you know, know ye not, that they which run in a race run all, they all run, but one receives the prize. That we have begun the race is not a guarantee that we will finish the race, but you will finish. You have a mind to finish, a commitment to finish, a consecration to finish. So run that she may obtain every man that striveth for the mastery. You will not strive for mediocrity. You will not be a weak, useless runner. You will run to the finishing line. And you will have your mind set on mastery. Everyone, every man 
that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things, moderate in all things. You temper all the things in you. This one that you want to shoot that way, shoot that way, shoot the other way, and scatter all your energy everywhere, be temperate in all things. Those are the people who are secured. Be temperate in what you drink, temperate in what you eat, temperate in your interactions, temperate in your friendships, temperate in all the things of the world that you do not abuse the things you have in the world now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible I therefore apostle I therefore a preacher I therefore a minister I therefore a pilgrim, I therefore a member of the body of Christ, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, Paul, are you still fighting? I fight with the beasts at Ephesus, I fight the good fight of faith, I fight against falsehood. I fight against temptation trying to pull me down. I fight against the corrupt flesh wanting to draw me back. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body. Paul, I thought you are old already. And they tell us the older you become, the less your body, your flesh will have emotion or feeling. Paul, I thought you are an apostle and the grace of God saturates your life. I thought the more grace you have, the flesh is dead already. And Paul the apostle says, it's dead as long as I keep it dead. It's down. As long as I keep it down, it's inactive, inoperative. As I keep it inactive, inoperative. But if I let go, if I let loose, if I abandon myself to the things of the flesh and to the things of the world, all those works of the flesh will come back. They will not come back to you. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have prayed to others, I apostle myself shall be cast away. You'll not be cast away. Verse 27, let's read it together. But Now you read it with understanding. You read it with conviction. You read it with a firm voice. One, two, three, go. You will not be a castaway. But to see the condition there, it says, I put my body under all the parts of the body. I say, hand, you can't write that thing. Hand, you can't send that text. Eyes, you, can, you cannot look at that thing. Ears, you cannot continue to hear that kind of falsehood. Legs, you will not continue to walk there. I put every member of my body under subjection so that after I have preached to other people, I myself will not be a castaway. That's how to remain secured in the Lord. That's how to have the believer's security. We're looking at Romans 
chapter 11. In Romans chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 20. It says, well, because of unbelief, they were broken up. They were there before, but they were broken up. Because of unbelief, what's the condition of security? That you will not slide into unbelief. You will not go into unbelief. You will abide in the things with which you believed. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken up. And thou standest by faith. Be not high minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare thee not. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of the Lord on them which fell, they fell into unbelief. On them which fell, they fell into sin. On them which fell, they fell into falsehood. On them which fell, they fell into error. On them which fell, they fell into the spirit of the last days, severity. But toward thee, goodness, if thou continue. Toward thee, goodness, if thou continue. In his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. I pray you will not be cut off. Pray for me. I pray I will not be cut off. You will not be cut off in Jesus' name. But you know, you remain in faith. You abide in faith. You abide steadfast in the Lord. You allow the word to sink into you and to abide in you and as long as the world abides and remains in you you will not fall away Matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 11 Matthew 24 verse 11 how many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure, tell me from your Bible, but he that shall endure, tell me from your Bible, unto the end. He, the believer, he, the child of God, that shall abide unto the end. The same, the same, the same shall be saved. Those who are wondering about those who believe today and they don't believe tomorrow those who believe the totality of the word of God in the past but now they don't know what they believe anymore they're not abiding they're not enduring to the age if you're like that I pray the Lord will bring you back because you know if you remain in a coldness of love if you remain in that attitude if you remain in that backsliding position and you don't endure to the end there is no security for the sinner there is no security for the backslider there is no security for the apostate who has fallen away and who is not coming back. Your security as a believer depends on you enduring to the end by the grace of God. That grace will not fail in your life. Let's come to point number two now. The consequence of backslider's sinfulness. The consequence of the backslider's sinfulness. 
who is a backslider, somebody who was a believer, but is no more a believer, an ex-believer, an ex-follower, an ex-disciple, an ex-member, somebody who used to believe, but is not believing today. That's the backslider. What brought him there? What he led him there? Sin, sinfulness. And as a consequence of the backslider's sinfulness. Look at Proverbs chapter 21. In Proverbs chapter 21, reading from verse 16, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. He was a believer. He trusted the Lord. He believed in the Lord. He repented of his sins. He quit all the sins. He became a new creature in Christ. But now he wandered away from the congregation of the righteous now is spiritually dead it's in the congregation of the dead of the backsliders by the way what makes people backslide little 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 things open your bible in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1 Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1 dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary that's the word from where they get pharmacy. Read it like that so you'll understand. Dead flies cause the ointment, the lotion, the medicine of the pharmacist to send forth stinking savor. When a little germ, a little bacteria a little evil thing gets into that solution you cannot drink it anymore because it is poison so doth a little folly him that is a reputation for wisdom and honor the person who had christ in him the wisdom of god now he's departed from that wisdom and a little folly, a little error, a little sin has now come in. That's the beginning of backsliding. Little things, little things, little things. Song of Solomon, reading from verse chapter 2, verse 15. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. Take us the foxes the little foxes that spoil the vines. I am the vine, here are the branches. My father is the husband man. But a little fox, a little evil, a little unrighteousness, a little sinfulness spoils that vine. Those things begin Backsliding begins in a little way. Come to the New Testament in First Corinthians chapter 5. First Corinthians chapter 5. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 5. We're reading from verse 6. It says, 
Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lamb? Don't you know? The backsliding starts in a very little way. And don't you know that little insincerity, that little lie, That little evil, that little carelessness, that little folly will make you slide on, slide on, slide on until there's no stopping. The Lord deliver us. He says, Know ye not, don't you know, that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lamb? Pudge out. Therefore, the old lemon, that she may be a new lamb, as ye are unleavened. For ye born Christ, a Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, you want to remain in the Lord? This condition. Therefore, you want to abide in the Lord, this condition. Therefore, you want to be secured in the Lord, this condition. Therefore, verse 8, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice, little thin, malice, little thin, anger, little thin, bad temper, Little sin, little hatred, little sin, wickedness. But let's have the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The Lord keep us watchful. The Lord keep you watchful. The Lord keep me watchful. Look at Galatians. We're looking at Galatians. Chapter 5, and we're reading from verse 9, Galatians chapter 5, verse 9, a little leaven leafness the whole lamb. The Lord is telling us to beware of the inroad of backsliding, a little folly, a little foolishness, a little malice. A little anger, a little bad temper, a little talkativeness, a little sinfulness, a little compromise coming in, little by little you are derailed. And he says, let's watch therefore and purge out all those little, little, little things. James chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 5. James chapter 3, verse 5. Even so the tongue is a little member. Watch out. And boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindles. A little fire of fighting. A little fire of violence, a little fire of argument, a little fire of disagreement, a little fire of the bad mouth, of the strange tongue. How big, how great a matter, a little fire kindleth, verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the cause of nature and is set on the fire of hell. I pray you will not be there. Sometimes is the influence of other people, a little influence. Christ has been influencing you, instructing you, controlling you, inspiring you, 
and then a little figure comes i say little in comparing what in comparison with christ and he wants to give you an advice a counseling and he wants to make you go this or that direction whoever that is a man or a woman whoever that is a prophet or a preacher whoever that is a bishop or a pastor whoever that is is a little figure person little in comparison to christ who wants to derail you they will not derail you they might come with a smile they might come with what they say is a good intention they might come with a particular purpose or whatever it is they want to give you a little counsel that will make you go astray from the lord it will not happen to you they will come but they will not succeed in the case of the children of israel moses their leader had gone to the mountain top he went because of them he was without food without water 40 days because of them he went to receive the law from the hand of god for them and aaron was at home in charge of the millions of people the whole congregation and somebody a little pygmy came to aaron and he came with some other little little ones little in comparison to god little in comparison to moses and said moses is gone he's not around we cannot see him but you remember his word we cannot see him but you remember his works you cannot see him but you remember his watchfulness over you and you remember all the sacrifice that he had for you and he abandoned being called pharaoh's daughter's son and he left everything for you to get you out of egypt but he said it's gone for a few weeks now and because we cannot see him for a few days make us gods they will come they say this is an easy way that other way is difficult that other world is difficult because god we still want to worship but a god of low value a god of lower principle a god that is worldly a god that one can see and follow and he did and all of them without exception followed after the new god the new idol that aaron raised up for them do you know that a whole congregation can backslide do you know that a whole denomination can backslide we've seen a lot of de de denominations like that a new leader has come the other leader moses is away for some time and the god of psychology and the god of syncretism and the god of false worship is introduced to the people and they forget what they have been hearing all these many years and they turn away from the lord you will not turn away from the lord i will not turn away from the lord look at exodus chapter 32 i'm reading from verse 32 yet now if thou will forgive the forgive their sin he didn't finish that sentence and if not blot me i pray thee out of the book which thou was written and the lord said unto moses here is the consequence of the backslider's sinfulness and the lord said unto moses whosoever have sinned against me him will i blot out of my book did you hear that i said did you hear that 
Okay, read it for yourself. For starters, three. One, two, three, go. You see what the Lord said? And God says, I'm God, I change not. It's still the same God today. He said, Whosoever as high as Aaron, whosoever an important figure in the commonwealth of Israel, whosoever a man, a woman in the church, whosoever a member, a minister, whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. You will not sin. You will not be blotted out of the book of life. But you know, those who sin, continue in sin, and they graduate in sin, and they work sin, and they practice sin, and they think they're eternally secured. I'm there. I will always be there. Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Look at Joshua chapter 24. In Joshua chapter 24, verse 20. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt after and consume you after he hath done you good. Look at Joshua, a faithful preacher, a faithful leader. He did cajole the people, deceive the people, excite the people on bubbles, on things that have no weight and no value. He said, the Lord is with you now. So far, so good. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then they will turn and do you hurt. They'll reject you. They'll punish you. They'll cast you off. It'll make you seem like the Gentiles, the pagans, and the unbelievers and consume you after he has done you good. You understand? Security in the Lord is conditional. And a condition is abide in him. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Reading from chapter 15. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 1. 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 1. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Odeh, and he went out to meet Asa, and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa. And all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while ye be with him. If ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. You see, it's a coin with two sides. On the one side, if you seek him, if you follow him, if you continue with him, you'll find him. You'll find his favor. You'll find his love. You'll find his mercy. You'll find his goodness. But if you forsake him, I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a disciple. I'm a member of the church. I'm following after the Lord. So far, so good. If in the private at the time of temptation, at the time of trial, at the time of difficulty, if in your office, if at home, 
you begin to practice something contrary to the word of God. If you forsake him and forsake his word and forsake his principle and forsake his laws, if you forsake him, he will also forsake you. I will not forsake the Lord. I said I will not forsake the Lord. The temptation might come. Let's be together. Let's come together. Let's compromise. I'll give up this. You give up that. I'll give up my own tradition. You give up your own doctrine. I'll give up this. You give up that. So that we can walk together. If you forsake the Lord, forsake the word of the Lord, forsake the doctrine of the word of God, he also will forsake you. I will not forsake him. Say it like I say it now. The Lord answer your prayer in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 26. If we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, look up here. Everyone in our church, hearing the word of God every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, all year round, we cannot pretend that we have not got the truth. We have received the knowledge of the truth. We know the truth about God the Father. We know the truth about Jesus, our Savior, our all in all. We know the truth about the Holy Spirit. We know the truth about the experience of entering into the kingdom, being born again. We know the truth of purity of heart, holiness of life, sanctification experience. We know the truth of the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon our lives. We know the truth of one man, one wife, until death do us part. We know the truth of restitution. We know the truth that Christ is coming again. Now, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, if we sin willfully, if we throw away our conscience, if we throw away sound doctrine, if we throw away our Bibles, and if we throw away our preachers, and quieting and silence our preachers, don't tell us the truth anymore. Don't say that anymore. Whether we say it or not, whether we keep preaching or not, already you have the knowledge of the truth. Now, if you sin willfully, if with your eyes open, with your mind attentive, and your will set, if now you sin willfully after you have received the knowledge of the truth, there is there remains no more sacrifice for sins. Christ is not going to come back and make another sacrifice for your salvation. If you reject what he has given already, it's not good to give another thing. If you reject the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, if you reject the revelation of the New Testament given to us by the apostles and the prophets of Jesus Christ, and you sin willfully, there is no more sacrifice for sin. It's not going to change the whole system. Cancel the New Testament and give you a new revelation and make a new sacrifice that will get you to heaven we must not sin you will not sin verse 27 but if fearful looking for of judgment and furry indignation 
which shall consume and devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much sorrow punishment, more terrible punishment, more severe punishment, and more lasting punishment, and more rigorous punishment. If we turn away from what he has given us already of how much sorrow punishment, suppose ye shall leave be thought worthy who has trodden on the foot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant where we he was sanctified. He now counts that an unholy sin and he has done despite unto the spirit of grace. It will not happen to you. But you must watch. You must be careful, watchful. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, and I will recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge which people? The Lord shall judge, I said, who? Tell me, tell me. Remind yourself of that quickly. His people, his people who are saved, his people who are following after him, but now, because of deliberate wickedness, wantonness, he says, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I pray the judgment will not come upon you. Look at that Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. You'll keep your faith on. You keep on living by faith. You will not walk by sight. You will not take laws into your hand. You will walk in the way of God by faith in Jesus' name. The faith that saves is the faith that keeps us steadfast. As you believe the Lord and you escape the judgment of God, so you keep on believing so that the judgment will never come back again to you. Now the just shall live by faith, but if, tell me, but if any man draw back, <clears throat> want you to get married, the wife has not come, and because of that, if any man draw back, want you to have certificate, I've been doing that exam how many times now? And they say, except you compromise and you give your body to the examiner so that it will allow you to scale through. They say, you never go out of that class, out of that college without giving yourself or giving money. If any man draw back, if any girl draws back, and sometimes you've gone for an interview and somebody told you behind, actually, you did well, you passed, you should expect a letter, but you must pour down some water so you can step on wet ground. And except you do that, you know, lady, young man, it's no more brain now. It's not what you know. It's who you know. And except you give something like what, sir? Uh -uh. Are you not an intelligent person? Okay, if you don't understand, except you give some money. Is that not bribe, sir? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. 
And except you do that, I don't know whether I can do that or not. Why? He doesn't say, because I believe in Christ. Because the word of God forbids me to do that. He says, because I go to a church and that church does not give favor to those who give bribes. There you are. Which church is that? It's deeper life. Is that the only church in town? You want to get a job? Your church will not allow you to give bribe. Go to another church and give what you need to give so that you can get a job. Job will not take salvation from you. A job will not take heaven from you. A job will not impose hell on you. That's not a deeper life. Amen. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Verse 39. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. I will not draw back. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. If you are backsliding already, come back today. Be restored today. Don't allow that little thing to impose hell on you and to make you go to hell. Don't gamble with your eternal life. Second Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, those are sick people, redeemed people, renewed people, transformed people, they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they are again entangled therein that's backsliding they escaped they repented they were forgiven they became children of God they were walking straight and living right. But now, <clears throat> they're again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end of them is worse than the beginning. The latter end of them is worse than the beginning. What does that mean? Before they got saved, if they had died like that, they would have gone to hell normally. Expressway. No turning back. Hell. But now, they got saved. They escaped. They became new creatures in Christ. They became totally different. But, they are now again entangled. Entangled in pollution. Entangled in defilement. Entangled in fornication. Entangled in idolatry, entangled in adultery, entangled in sorcery, entangled in error and falsehood. It says the end is worse than the beginning. That means hell will be hotter for them. Punishment will be more severe for them. I pray it will not happen to you. All right, it will not happen to me. Look at verse 21. For it, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. It would have been better for them not to have known about righteousness, about holiness, about being born again, about new life in Christ, and they go to hell normally, like all the sinners. But now, then, after they have known the truth, 
and they have known the way of God to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Life in eternity will be worse for them. But it has happened unto them. According to the true proverb, the dog is turned to some vomit again. You will not turn to your vomit again. Where you came from, false worship, you will not go back again in Jesus' name. Where you came from, defilement, sinfulness, you will not go back in Jesus' name. And the soul, the swine, the pig that was washed to a wallowing in the mire, in the mire. That's the consequence of the backslider's sinfulness. I will not backslide. I will not backslide. You will not backslide in Jesus' name. If you are backsliding, look at this. Today, you can come back. James, chapter 5, verse 19. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, in his conversion needs restoration, let him know that he which combated the sin and the backslider from the error of his way shall save his soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. You'll continue. Point number three now. Consecration. Consecration with blameless steadfastness. Second Peter chapter three or seventeen. Ye therefore, beloved, seen ye know these things before beware. That ye be, led, be, be not led away for the air of the wicked to fall from your own steadfastness. You will not fall. I will not fall. Let's rise up. Promise the Lord, I will not fall. I will not fall. I will not fall. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Pray. 